morning, everyone. I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again to listening to our powerful program. That is being delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W. F. Umoye. Your attitude. Today, as we come to the final day and the final message and the final ministration in our covenant series of this January, I'm looking at knowing the God of the new covenant. Knowing the God of the new covenant the lord who has come to make covenant with us is the covenant keeping god and we need to know that god love that god know what that god can do the ability of that god the power of that god and the possibilities we have in that god knowing the god of the new covenant we're looking at jeremiah chapter 31 Jeremiah chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 31. Behold, the days come. The days have come. I said, The days have come, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. The Lord announced ahead of time. He prophesied ahead of time. He predicted ahead of time that the days are coming. That he will make a new covenant with his people. And then he tells us in verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. At those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. This is part of the covenant. What the Lord himself said he will do. He said he will put his own law in the inward parts of his people and write it in their hearts. He'll write his words. He'll write his doctrines. He'll write his precepts. He'll write his statutes in the hearts of men and will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man is brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. The God who is making covenant with us said, They shall all know me. That's what we're talking about knowing the God of the new covenant. And then he said, For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the great. Our children will know the Lord. Our youths will know the Lord. Even those who are just coming in and getting born again and getting saved, they will know the Lord in Jesus' name. And of course, those of us who have been there for so many years, we will know the Lord more. And it says in the verse 34, they shall all know him. From the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Praise the Lord. When we know the Lord, what was the result of that? Somebody says, I know the Lord. And say, what is the evidence of knowing the Lord in our lives? We're looking at Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Daniel chapter 11 reading from verse 32 and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries it's still talking about the covenant and it says there are some people that will not observe the covenant respect the covenant reverence the covenant observe the covenant obey the covenant there's some people that do not fully give themselves to the covenant you know they just come to the service and he don't say everything the Lord is saying about his covenant. But corrupt, they corrupt the covenant because there's somebody flattering them. Because there's an antichrist flattering them. Because there is a deceiver, a corrupter of the lives of men flattering them. But it says all the same but in the statue, the people that do what? 
Tell me out loud. The people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. The people that know the God of the covenant. The new covenant. Those are the people in this day. Those are the people this year. We shall be strong. I say you will be strong. And it shall do exploits. As I talk about knowing the God of the covenant. I want you to think about knowing God. Knowing God. There are some people that say well we know God already. And we don't need any other instruction, any other scripture, any other message to make us to know God. I dare tell you that, you know, as I break out John and Judas, Judas Iscariot, and I'm asking Judas, do you know Christ? Of course I do. I'm a treasurer. Of course I do. I've been following Christ all about. Of course I do. I've seen all these miracles. And I've seen all that he did. I've had all the messages. And I said, John, do you know God? He said, you better understand. I know him. I know Christ. Hi, but Judas says, carry out. Don't worry about him. He doesn't know anything about Christ. As Savior, as Substitute, as Lord, as a great miracle worker, as the one that will rise from the dead. What did Judas know? You know, some people say, I've been going there. And I've seen it all. And because of that, they think they know the God of the new covenant. I'm inviting you to come and know that God in a deeper sense, in a greater sense today. And as you know him, he says, you will be strong. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. And you remember the, in the Old Testament, we have this young man, his name is Joseph. And then you have Reuben and Simeon and Judah and all the rest of the children of Jacob. And I'm asking them, do you know the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? And they say, yes, of course we do. Our daddy told us about him. We know him. And I asked Joseph, and I said, how about you? He said, I know him, not the way they know him. You know, there are some people that know him from history. Daddy told me. My grandpa told me. And all the other people told me about the God of Israel. But Joseph, he knew God in such a very definite way, special way. That's why the Lord took him from the prison and he took him to the palace. And today, this time, is the time and the year and the period of your exaltation in Jesus' name. Well, you know the Lord, not like Reuben and Simeon and Judah and all those other people that knew him in the head. They didn't know him in the heart. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. And then you think about, it is a man they call Caiaphas. In the New Testament. And the people were discussing this with the high priest at that time. And they were saying, you don't understand this. That we're going to take this Jesus Christ and we're going to crucify him. He's going to die. And Caiaphas said, you don't know anything at all. I know everything. Caiaphas, tell me what you know. It is better that one man be taken. And then he's crucified so that the whole world and all the nations will be saved. And then I'm saying, Caiaphas, looks like you know Christ. And then Cornelius said, but I saw. And then I took action. And while Peter was still speaking, what happened? The Holy Ghost came on him. And I'm saying, I prefer to know God like Cornelius, that the Holy Ghost will be upon me, than Caiaphas just sitting down there and say, we're going to crucify Jesus. What I'm telling you is, there are people that think they know God superficially in the natural externally historically you've seen him in Capernaum in Jerusalem in Judea and all those places but knowing God experientially the God of the new covenant it is when you know God like that and that knowledge of God drives you to action that it says they will be strong I'll be strong I said I'll be strong and then they shall do what? They shall do exploits knowing the God of the new covenant. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the privilege of knowing God. The privilege of knowing God. What a great privilege that the Lord should get us near to himself so that we know him. And he says, I want you to know me because 
If you're going to do something definite in life, and if you're going to get somewhere definite in life, it is that knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. The privilege of knowing God. Number two, the people who know God. The people who know God. What are the people here today? The people that know God. You will know God. And the power of the Lord will manifest in your life in Jesus' name. And then point number three is the power of knowing God. The people that do know their God. They're the people that will be strong. And they're the people that will do, do what? Exploits. The power of knowing God. Let's come to number one. The privilege of knowing God. The covenant keeping God. The privilege of knowing Him. I'm looking at Osea chapter 2. Osea chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 19. Osea chapter 2 verse 19. And I will be such thee unto me forever. Yea, I will be so thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. And I will even be so thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. The Lord says, I'm going to be so to you. You know what that means? The old English language means, it means I'm going to get married unto you. And it's going to be a covenant marriage, a marriage covenant between you and I, a kind of agreement, a kind of cleaving together, a kind of staying together, a special kind of relationship that he will be to you unto himself like a man betrothes a woman unto himself and he says that marriage covenant coming together is going to bring a new relationship between you and I and then he says in verse 21 and it shall come to pass in that day I will hear says the Lord I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth in verse 22 and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel and I will so her unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy the mercy of the Lord is coming upon your life and I will say unto them which were not my people thou art my people what's your relationship a new relationship that is knowing the Lord you are not a man of God you are not a child of God you are not a daughter of God but God says I'm going to be so true to myself I'm going to get married to you I'm going to bring you into a closer relationship and where it was said they were not my people now it shall be said they are the people of the Lord and they shall say Thou art my God. I pray that will happen to everyone. When you turn away from your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who so died for you on the cross of Calvary, I'll say, Yes, Lord, I believe. And what your heart should believe, what you must confess that Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord, that salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. And God will say, Yes, that's my child. And then you will say, Yes, Lord, that's my Father, my Heavenly Father. In Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 25. Romans chapter 9, verse 25. As see as 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 he saith also in Ose as Osea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of of the living God. They shall be called the children of the living God. Isn't that a change of position? A change of relationship. They were not the people of God. Our sins separated us from the Lord. But now the sin is dealt with. Christ has died on the cross of Calvary. And you have come to say yes. I believe that Christ is my Savior. And the moment you say yes. He is my Savior. I receive him. I accept him, I own him, I embrace him as my Lord and Savior. He says you are not a child of God before, but now you become a child of God. And there is a knowledge that you have that this Christ is mine, my Savior, my substitute. 
is my seat bearer. He's taking all my sins away. I believe in him that he is mine, and he declares that I am his. We're looking at Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 21. Job chapter 22, verse 21. We're looking at how you come to know God, the privilege of knowing God, the privilege of knowing God, and what happens when you know Him. You know Him as your Savior. You know him as your sin bearer. You know him as the one that has taken the guilt and the body and the punishment of sin away. And then he gives you a new heart, a new life. You become a new creature in him. Job chapter 22 verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him. He says, don't stay so far away. Come near. He says, don't stay separated from this almighty God. Get near and be related unto him. And he says, Acquaint now thyself with him and, and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. And lost an amen there. Yeah. And then in verse 22, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. Receive, I pray thee. The law from his mouth. Isn't that what he said when he said, I'll make a new covenant with them? And when I make that new covenant with them, I'm going to put my law in their mind. I'm going to put my statutes and my word in the very heart. And the Lord is saying, If you want this new covenant to be yours, you must just stay relaxed and rest and let me write my law in your heart. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. Verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. God is going to build you up. This is going to be a year of growing for you. A year of development and a year of being built up in Jesus name. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away. What's that? Tell me out loud. Iniquity put away, iniquity far from the tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust. Prosperity is coming. And the gold of offer as the stones of the books. Yea, the Almighty shall be that defense. God will protect you. And thou shalt have plenty of, of silver, wealth, riches, prosperity. This is the year. For they shall thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto Him. What? And He shall hear thee. When? I said when. Congratulations today, today. The Lord is going to answer our prayers in Jesus' name. That shall make that prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Verse 28 is so beautiful, so wonderful. Why don't you read it aloud yourself? Won't you go? You want to say amen to that? Thou shalt own.